Good morning everybody and um, welcome to the Perfect Runner Strength Session, I believe number four that I've done for you on this YouTube channel. Um, in case you're not a Perfect Runner, you're still welcome um, if you just want to do a little bit of uh, running strength and stability work. Uh, my name's Paula and I am personal trainer at UCAN Fitness um, and um, welcome to this channel. Okay, right, so today we're going to be looking at um, the posterior chain of muscles. So quite often a lot of the stuff that we do, um, we do, we spend a lot of time working on our, our quads with our squats and our lunges. Um, and it's really good to be doing that sort of stuff. It's obviously um, incredibly beneficial to you as a runner. However, um, sometimes we neglect the back muscles down the back of the legs here, so the posterior chain. So that's, we're looking at glutes, which I do go on about quite a lot, I know, um, and we're looking at hamstring, and we're looking at calf. Now, I'm just gonna go through three different exercises. Um, we have touched on some of these already, um, and we're just gonna build on a little bit and just show you a slight sort of variation um, for you to do. Uh, so we're going to get straight into it. I would recommend that you do a little bit of a warm-up first. When there's not any cardio involved in this, um, so we don't need, necessarily need to do a cardio warm-up, but it would be beneficial because it would be pumping that blood around to your muscles ready to work. So I suggest you do three to five minutes of um, gentle cardio, or you could um, go onto my warm-up video on this channel and just quickly do that before we start. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that you are nicely warmed up and we are good to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the glute muscle. Um, quite often we do glute bridges, single leg glute bridges. Um, so we're going to do a variation on that today. Well, not a variation, actually, a completely different exercise. Um, so we're going to lay on our sides for this one. And you want to be led out nice and straight. You're kind of getting yourself almost into a side plank position. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to take that bottom leg though and we're going to bend it back to about a 90 degree angle. So your knees are still nicely in line at this point. And then we're going to raise our hip up by pushing that bottom knee into the ground. So you're going to push the bottom knee into the ground and then raise that top leg. Now, with the top leg raised, we're going to bring it slightly back and we're going to just push that leg away, but try and keep it horizontal, but almost add a bit of resistance to it, pushing the knee into the ground still. Okay, let's go through that again. And what we're going to do when we get into that raised position, we're going to breathe and we're going to hold that for the count of about 10, okay? And we're going to do about eight on each side. So laying on your side, bottom leg about a 90 degree bend. We're going to focus on lifting those hips up, and then once in that position, we're going to do that by pushing the bottom knee into the ground. But once in that position, the top leg is straight and slightly comes behind you. And you're going to add some resistance to that top leg by tensing it and still continuing to push that bottom knee into the ground. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> so let's go. Push the bottom knee into the ground to lift the hip. Raise the top leg to horizontal. Bring it back slightly. Squeeze. Three four, five, six. Keep pushing that bottom knee into the ground and relax. We're gonna do it again in a sec, so just give your leg a little bit of time to recover. And we're gonna go again, so straighten out that top leg, push the bottom knee into the ground, leg goes back slightly, tense the top leg, push the knee into the ground. Five. Keep the hips high, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. We're going to go for it again. So just give that hip and that bottom a little bit of chance to relax. Just give it a few seconds. If you need longer for it to recover before going again, then you just take a bit longer. Okay, push that bottom knee into the ground. Up we go, leg comes slightly behind. We did a variation of this one um, in one of the other strength sessions where we did uh, more of a moving leg raise. So this is more of a holding and squeezing one. Okay, and down, relax. I think that's three we've done. So we've got five more to do. Okay, push the bottom knee into the ground, leg is straight at the top, hip comes up, get it to horizontal and then back slightly, you should feel that glute kicking in, if you put your hand there you should feel it, and in the hip as well. And relax, four to go. Okay, 
Okay, leg is straight, bottom knee into the ground, lift, leg to horizontal, slightly back, resist, push the knee into the ground. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, relax. Three to go. If you found that your shoulder or your elbow are getting a bit achy, guys, just sit up and you know, just shake it off a little bit or have a little bit more of a rest if you want to and then go again. You ready? Let's go. Push that knee into the ground. Horizontal, back it goes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. Two more. Okay, let's go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we've got one more to go. Just make sure you're really adding that resistance to that top leg and really pushing that knee into the ground the whole time. Okay, let's go, final one. And up we go, back we go. Two, three, squeeze. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax, okay. So you know what's coming now, right? We're gonna do it on the other side. So take it over to the other side. It's that shoulder and elbow get a bit of a break now. So nice and straight line. Bottom leg bends back to a 90 degree angle. Knees are stacked on top of each other. Okay, so push that bottom knee into the ground. We're gonna lift, back comes the leg straight into horizontal. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax it down. Let's go again, push the knee into the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and down. If you're not feeling it in your bottom, it might be that your leg isn't coming back far enough, so it just needs to come back slightly, because if it's still in line with the other leg, it's not actually gonna get into that glute so much. Okay, let's go for number three. Push the, push the knee into the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's go again. Up we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, was that number four? I think it was. Okay, so let's go for number five. It's either three or four. <laughs> okay, push the bottom knee into the ground. Two, three, four, Five, keep pushing, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that was number five then. If I've diddled you out of one set, you just carry on when I stop. Let's go for number six, pushing in. One, two, three, keep pushing, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four to go. Up we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. Getting into my elbow and shoulder now. Three to go. Just shaking off a little bit. Giving it a little rub if you need to. You might want to do it on a mat if it's better on a mat. I've got a mat behind me. I just chose not to use it. And now I feel like I'm getting a bit of a carpet burn. Right, three to go. Are you ready? Let's go. Push up. Leg comes back slightly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, two to go. Don't forget to be always pushing that bottom knee into the ground and really adding that resistance to that top leg. Okay, let's do it. We go, push that leg back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I started counting late, didn't I? Then she had a little bit extra. 
We've got one more to go, guys. You ready? Final one. Let's go. Leg back. Two, three. Squeeze. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well done, guys. Okay. Ah, oh, well done. Right, okay. Before we move on, if you've been following these Perfect Runner strength, strength videos, you'll know that I've been doing a little competition for the running club throughout them, where I've been holding up a letter of a, a name that forms an anagram, um, the name of somebody in the running club. So I'm going to hold up another letter today. And in fact, I am actually going to hold up more than one. So today, here we are, um, you see that? I've got two letters today, E and H. So write those ones down and pop those with the other letters that you have already, hopefully, been gathering. Right, we're going to get into the calves now. Now before, we've done some calf raises in one of the other videos, and these are really, really good for calf strength. Um, but always have to go into these a little bit cautiously, because if you've not done them, um, or you don't do very many of them, you might find you get very achy the next day. And at the time of doing them, it might feel like absolutely nothing, but the next day you might be like, ah, that's really hurting. So just get into it cautiously and build them up over time. Um, so we are going to do calf raises again, but I'm just going to show you a slight variation on that. So I'm going to start, first of all, with a dynamic calf stretch, which I would like you to do as well. And I'm going to do a variation on that too. Um, and then we're going to do some calf raises, but we're going to get into different parts of the calf muscle. So first of all, we're going to do a dynamic stretch. So you're going to literally get into a calf, a static calf stretch position, okay? And then bring the other leg back with it so that both legs are in a static calf stretch position, then you're just going to walk heel to toe, slowly but purposely, getting into that muscle, giving it a little stretch. You need to step back a little bit further so that that heel has to drop a little bit further, and you can really feel that, then do that. But it is important to get your calves warmed up before this one. If you're the sort of person that finds that your calves ache or you get calf cramp a lot when you're running, and just get very stiff and sore. It might just be a muscle weakness, um, and so it just might be that you need to start building up a little bit through those calves. So the next thing you want to do now is the same thing, but we're just going to turn the toes slightly out, okay? And now from here, we're going to just do the same thing. So now you've got your toes slightly out, and you're just walking, and I'm just going to do that over here. You carry on in case you couldn't really see what I was doing. So I'm back in the calf stretch, Turn the toes out, and now hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Looks a bit strange, I know. I'm just going to make sure that we get into all of that calf muscle. And now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to turn the toes slightly in. Again, you might need to step back a little bit further to really feel that. Now that's working the big part of the calf muscle, which is your gastrocnemius, but we're going to get down a little bit lower now into your soleus part of your muscle, which is sort of a bit lower down coming towards your Achilles area. So uh, what I want to do is to make sure that we get that warmed up too, first of all. So we're going to do the same thing, but to stretch into soleus, you would, instead of having that back leg straight, you would add a little bend to it, okay? So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have the calf stretch, normal calf stretch, now we're going to bend our knees slightly, and now we're going to do walking, dynamic stretch of calf, but getting more into that lower down soleus area. So now you should feel that stretching a little lower into your legs, okay? But be very cautious with this, because this stretch of the soleus muscle is quite a deep stretch, so you just don't want to overdo it. But that's why it's important we do the dynamic stretches first to get warmed up. Okay, from here we're going to do the same thing. Toes are pointing out, but knees are slightly bent. Now, dynamic stretch. So heel to toe, but with our toes out and our knees slightly bent. You might feel that your calves are already actually starting to ache. So 
So now let's turn toes in, knees are slightly bent, and there we go. Get a bit knock knee doing this one. Okay, so those are really good ones that you could do before you run if you do tend to suffer with tight calves when you're running. Be good to do those dynamic stretches before you get going and that will just prepare the leg a little bit better for the run. Um, so now we're going to do the actual calf raises. So we all know these calf raises where your just toes are forward and we're going to come up on the toes <laughs> and down. And you can hold a weight if you want to add a bit more resistance to that one. Um, so we're going to add to that now by doing actually the ones where we go up on the toes still, so calf raises, but we're going to do it with toes out, we're going to do it with toes in, and then we're going to do it for the soleus part of the calf too. Okay, so you might want to stand near something where you can just put your fingertips on, not holding on for dear life, but just literally balancing your fingers on there for a bit of stability if you feel a bit wobbly in this, because I don't really want you to be focusing on the balance in this exercise so much as the calf strength. Okay, but if you're nice and stable, you can do it without, that's fine. So toes out first of all, and we're just going to do eight, okay? So we're going to raise up onto our toes and hold it just for a second, and then down. Can you see I've got my toes pointing out? And up we go. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Okay, now let's do pointing toes in. So a little bit knock knees, looks a bit strange. This is where you might need to put your fingers. One, just to support you. Two, three, four. Just hold a little bit at the top. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and now we're just going to do the normal front ways. Okay, so let's go for eight of the normal ones. So up, one, two, three, four, just turn to size so you can see, five, six, seven, last one, eight. Okay, to start with, that is plenty, okay? And actually, if you've never done calf raises before and you're getting straight into these ones where you're turning toes in, turning toes out, toes straight, I would actually suggest maybe even just doing four or five of each to start with, just see how your legs feel the next day, okay? Because you can really overload them. Because now we're gonna get into the soleus area, okay? So again, if you're feeling like your calves are already aching, maybe add this bit on in a couple of days time and I'll show you anyway. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, but with our knees with a slight bend, okay? So first of all, we're going to do the, um, the, the toes forward version, okay? So slight bend, and we're just going to come up and down. We'll do eight, three, four, Five. So just keeping that slight knee bend the whole time. Six, seven, eight. Okay, toes outwards now. Toes out, slight knee bend. Off we go. One, two, three. Keep that slight knee bend. Four. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and the last one we're going to do is just toes in for soleus muscles, so just slight bend again. One, two, three, four. So remember, we are keeping that bend on the knees. Five, Six, seven, and eight. Okay, right, just shake those legs out a little bit and we're gonna get straight into a bit of a static stretch now just to stretch them out nicely um, where they're probably feeling a little bit tight from that. 
So stand back, pushing that heel into the ground of the back leg and just hold. So while you're holding that and getting a nice stretch in those calf muscles out, just gonna tell you how you can build on that. You can always add weights uh, to make a little bit more resistance. And the other thing you can do is to do it on a step so that you can actually drop your heels slightly down before you then raise up on your toes. And that's just gonna increase the range that you're getting in there. Can you change legs? But I wouldn't say that you should be doing that until you know, you're feeling stronger. And then obviously you can move on into single calf raises, single legs, so one leg at a time, which means you're putting your entire body weight on one leg. So obviously make sure you're good and strong in the two legs to start with, and then lots of different variations. If you guys change legs back to the original leg again now, push the heel into the ground. This time I want you to now take just a slight step forward with that leg, so it's closer to the other leg. Slight bend of the knee. Now you should feel that getting into that soleus on the back leg. Static stretch, just to stretch it out. And let's change the other leg. So big step back. And now just step it in slightly, just to get the place right. Slight bend of the knee and hold it there. And relax out of that. Okay, hopefully your calves don't feel too achy tomorrow, but if they do, then it's okay to feel a bit of an ache because you want to feel like you've worked them, but um, if it's too much, then just you know, give it a couple of days before you repeat them, but you do need to do them fairly regularly to see any uh, real benefit. Okay, so our final exercise we're going to do is getting into the hamstrings. So we've done the glutes, we've done the calves, so we're going to do hamstring. Now, uh, we're going to do something called a hamstring bridge, which is a little bit like a glute bridge, but we're not doing it for our glutes, we're doing it for our hamstrings. So with this one, I'm just going to take this off because I'm getting a little bit warm now. Um, okay, so for this one, we're going to lay um, on our backs and you're going to need a chair or a bench or something that you can put your feet up onto. So I'm just going to show you straight away. So you want to have the heels of your feet on the bench or the chair. Um, and because it's hamstrings we want to work, do you remember I said when we did the glute bridge before that if you had your feet close to your bottom, you're going to feel it more on your bottom, but the further away, the more you're going to get into those hammies. So for this one, you're going to have the heels up, but also just shift you back a little bit so your bottom isn't too close. You're going to lay yourself down. Now the point with this one is you're going to drive your heels into that bench or chair, okay? And you're going to push them in and then raise, and you should now feel that, rather than in the glutes, you should feel that right down the hamstrings. We're just gonna hold it for a few seconds, and then we're gonna lower it down. Now we want to do 10 to 15 of these, and we want to do three sets ideally. So lift, pushing those heels in, you just don't lay off the uh, pressure. You're driving those heels in the whole time you're up. Push, 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 and down. That's two. Let's go again. Hips up, push those heels in, squeeze the bottom, but push the heels in the whole time. Now if you find you start getting a little bit twingy or niggly in your hamstring, it might just be it's going into a little bit of a cramp because it's not used to working so hard like this. Push again, so if that's the case, just come out, give it a rub, give it a little stretch and try and get back into it because it probably actually means you need to do these more. And down, just keep going. Push, keep driving those heels. And down. If you're not feeling it in your hamstrings, it might be that your bottom is too close to the step, the chair or the bench. So just move it a little closer. Sorry, <laughs> move it a little further away. <laughs> Push, keep pushing those heels. I've completely lost count again, but you wanna do 10 to 15 however you are feeling. Push again, do not let off with that push. We're just pushing constantly with our feet, with our heels into the bench. And let's just do two more. Up we go, squeeze, push. 
and one more. Really press those heels into the bench. Okay. Right. So ideally with that one, you want to do three sets of between 10 to 15. Um, so what you could do is you could do this whole session over again three times round. However, I would probably advise you only do the calf part of it the first time round until you start getting much stronger. So repeat the glutes, repeat the hamstrings, um, and do the hamstring uh, the, the calf exercise maybe once each time you just do this session. Right, so we're going to do the final thing that we need to do is our plank challenge because, well, we need to get on this. I have heard a few more people talking about this now. I think people are just too shy to actually post their times, um, but that's okay because um, I know that you are out there and I know that you are doing it. Okay, it doesn't matter if you can't reach and you can't achieve, say, Bonnie's time or um, any really long time on the plank, it doesn't matter because actually. Um, it's about your challenge really, isn't it? We're making it into a competition just for a bit of fun, but it's about you and it's about doing the best that you can do and then actually building on that and improving it, okay? So if we do it every now and then, um, if you were to try and do it every night, for example, uh, just for a little while, just for a few seconds, you would definitely see an improvement after a week or so. Um, so let's get down. Now I've got my timer ready <clears throat> somewhere. And I'm also going to put my music on because it's going to help, I think. I'm going to turn the speaker on. So, bear with. Are you ready? Remember, time yourself. Forearms. Legs are straight, you want a nice straight line, make sure that your bottom's not up because that's cheating and not dip down because that is not good for your back. Okay, you ready? We're going to go. Three, two, one, go. Just keep trying, and if you're only planking for 30 seconds, 
you know, within a week or so, I bet you could get that to 40 seconds really easily. It's going to start creeping up there. Um, before you know it, you'll be planking for a minute and that's decent. So just keep trying, okay? It's going to get you stronger in your core. It's going to be good for your running. It's going to be good for your everyday life, everything you do, okay? So just get on those forearms, get in that nice strong line, get planking. All right, guys, have a really lovely day and uh, don't forget to stretch after this, please. Get into those hammies. Good stretch, stretch video if you want to use it. Otherwise, just do the normal static stretching you would after a run. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Bye.